Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for listening. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Owners Freedom Formula Show, where we chat with inspiring entrepreneurs and dig into their highs, lows, and everything between of their business building journey and learn about how they've been able to achieve ultimate freedom. In today's episode, episode number five, we have another great guest with us here today. But before we get started, just a quick reminder that you can get all the show notes by going to our website, paulmaskill.com. Or if you're on your iPhone, you can simply click on the podcast logo and the show notes will pop right up. And if you're looking to mastermind with other like-minded business owners that are listening to the show, jump into our free Facebook group, bizfreedomformula.com. And did I mention all of our podcasts are recorded live, including video with no edits, so you can check us out in Facebook, on YouTube, and as you can see, Leslie Hassler is waving hi. And that is who is with us today, and her intro is probably a lot like many other business owners out there. Have you ever felt like walking away from everything in your business? In her first business, Leslie sure did. After struggling to grow her interior design business after the 2008 recession, Leslie was ready to throw in the towel. She was burned out, sick and tired, and just sick and tired of being sick and tired. In an ultimatum moment with herself, Leslie decided to get help or get help. Getting help, she grew her business by 150% in just six months, and then set about rewriting the rules of business to get her back, get her zest back for being an entrepreneur. Today, Leslie of Your Biz Rules coaches startups and seasoned entrepreneurs to build six-figure-plus businesses in as little as 12 months. With Leslie's ability to simplify the complex processes of building a business, whether it's marketing, sales, systems, our favorite thing, or just finding time to do it all, you make more progress working with Leslie than you ever did on your own. The strategies and techniques that her clients implement create 30 to 200% growth easily within the next year. So that's Leslie Hassler from Your Biz Rules. Welcome, Leslie. How's it going today? Howdy. I'm happy to be here, Paul. It's a great day. It is a great day, and I'm excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking some time. So with that intro, did I miss anything? What are you up to uh, these days? Well, um, <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm like, I'm about up to five foot six. Uh, <laughs> it's my wow, nice work. That question. Uh, so I, I'm up to a lot of gr great things. You know, I've got... Um, changing some things up in my business. I've been working one-to-one -one with clients and I still continue to do that, but I want to help more businesses. I'm really inspired by that. And, you know, being a business owner, you know, the common statistic of, you know, 80% of the businesses fail in the first five years. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people are aware of that only 10% of small businesses, and this is like a major pool, like 78 million businesses, only 10% ever really make it into six figure. And so that's a lot of people working a lot really hard and not making any money at it. And um, I've yet to meet an entrepreneur that or yeah, an entrepreneur that left a corporate job to make zero dollars. <laughs> you know, I, it doesn't seem to be the right kind of math for me. Um, so I'm really um, excited to bring on a new product that enables me to help those people that are, you know, still struggling. They're working hard, but it's just not, it's not clicking. Um, so that's really what's got my fire burning right now. Very exciting. Yes, there's plenty of business owners out there. Uh, it feels like they left their job for more freedom, and then all of a sudden they're working harder than ever, making less than ever, and their hourly wage is probably below minimum wage. So... <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, take us back to when you first started your first business. Kind of what yeah. was it like? What were some obstacles? And then obviously we got to hit on that moment you almost quit and threw in the towel. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun moment. <laughs> um, you know, I tell people that I was an accidental entrepreneur. Meaning that while I did have an entrepreneurial spirit, and I can look back on that and see that now, I didn't, I wasn't setting out to start a business. I was working in design, working for other small businesses, and um, I got let go from my job because the designer didn't have enough money to pay for me. And I was really tired of that because it happens, you know, a lot in that um, business because it's very small businesses who don't necessarily have the best business practices. And so I said, well, I still want to do what I want to do. So why don't I just open up a business? This is the level of planning I did. <laughs> um, I did a little market research, you know, we filed incorporation papers. I think I was told I would like be let go on a Wednesday. Um, and I think we filed incorporation papers on Monday. And I was like, hanging my shingle and going out because really how hard could it be? Um, we didn't, I didn't really have difficulty 
when I started. We, um, was good times, right? This pre-recession, good times. People were spending money and they spent money with me. So within the first nine months, I was up to uh, multiple six figures. I was hiring staff. I really, and unfortunately, and maybe arrogantly, thought, man, I got it down. You know, I don't know what's <laughs> everyone else's problem, you know, kind of a thing. And not that I was, you know, bad mouthing everybody else, but I did think, man, I'm pretty good at this. Right. Um, and that occurred until the market crashed. And at that time I was in Houston. So we had a hurricane come through, which dried up business. Like you wouldn't believe because people were too busy repairing hurricane damage, not spending money on you know, interior design. <laughs> exactly. So ours dropped off like as soon as the hurricane hit in Houston and it, it shut Houston down for a little bit. Um, my business just whoop, whoop. and I was like, okay, first of the year we'll get back. Nobody wants to start a project on Christmas. First of the year came and crickets, 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 crickets. <laughs> um, and I really being, again, I guess a little self-absorbed at the time. I was like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And I struggled for two long years. I mean, I went to conferences. Who's done this, right? I've yeah. gone to conferences. <laughs> I've gone to the gurus. I'm going to do what they say to do. I've bought their little package. I read the book. I, you know, talked to everybody and tried to duplicate what they were doing. Um, and let me just tell you, I spent a heck of a lot of time and money on nothing working. And so, you know, by the end of those two years, I, um, I think because I thought it was so easy to begin with that I must need to work harder. And so that's when I was like, oh, this makes no sense. Okay. This <laughs> it no did at the time sense. though. It did at the time, right? Because I must need to work harder, right? Because if I work harder and longer, then suddenly Something's magic gonna will happen. happen. <laughs> right. And there, I mean, there's something to be said for being dedicated and being disciplined and focused, but it's really, um, you mentioned this a little bit when you were talking a second ago, it's that hustle and grind mindset that actually traps us. You know, we got to hustle, we got to sacrifice, we got to grind it out. <laughs> well, uh, I don't, I challenge that. You know, 10 years of being an entrepreneur, I'm going to challenge that because if, when it works the best, it's actually really easy. It's really simple and it flows. Like there's not, it's not like we're Sisyphus trying to pitch, you know, the earth up the mountain. It, it, it's just, it flows. And so, um, but I was still knee deep in, in hardship <laughs> and I was punishing myself, trying to work harder and um, nothing worked. And so that kind of come to Jesus moment that I had, I was actually sitting at a conference with a whole bunch of other quote unquote successful entrepreneurs because we always think everybody else is successful, yeah. right? <laughs> it looks that way when you see it on social media. So smoke and mirrors, baby, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> um, I have a degree in journalism. You can spend a lot of things if you know what to say. But I, I was in that room really feeling like I was the failure, like nobody else. The other hundred businesses that were in there, they all got it and I didn't. And I remember getting like a voicemail or an email asking me to approve the cost of new stationery. Okay, so this was 2010. Stationery. <laughs> Okay, because we just got a new logo. Wow, you know, the logo, fancy. <laughs> I, I, I'm making fun of this, but this is what we do, right? We're like, well, it must be our logo isn't working. Or, you know, I need new branding and that'll help and things like that. Well, it, it didn't help. And I approved the cost and I looked at my bank account. And I think I had maybe two or staff members at that time. And I had $113 in my bank account. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> was that able? Was that able? Was that able to cover the stationery? Oh heck no! <laughs> heck no! You know, and I just, I really just started crying. I, I was in this big old conference room crying, and people were looking at me like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "What is wrong?" I mean, I'm smart. I work hard. Why isn't it working? And um, I was really kind of like, "Do I quit? Do I stop?" because I thought I was good at this, but I'm not, and I'm not a quitter. I can't quit. Um, but I was like, okay, so I've tried it on my own. I've tried it from books. I've tried copying what everybody else is doing. It's not working. Let me go talk to somebody that knows what they're doing. So I got a coach and um, I will say, I think everybody needs a coach. I still have coaches, um, but you need to be a coach. It's like you start dating, right? These people get to know you and know you well. If they're going to do a good job, you have to share right? Make sure you like them. <laughs> <laughs> Very sure, important. 
make sure they're in alignment with you um, because there is somebody for you out there. But so I found a, a gentleman actually, and we got along swimmingly. And we did grow the business back. And what's really crazy and what I've learned now is um, you can have a bad business in good times and make money. You cannot have a bad business in bad times and make money. That is true. Right? <laughs> and so what was wrong with my business? You remember those three days of planning, right? Yeah. It wasn't that good of a business. It wasn't that good of a business. Like the business <laughs> basics were broken. So the growth happened not because the opportunity was there. And this is the thing I'm going to tell you. If you're sitting here and you're like, I don't have the opportunity. I don't have enough clients, whatever that I don't have enough of. It's there. It's just sitting there, right? <laughs> you may not recognize it for what it is. But if you don't have the capacity in your business to do something with it, it's not going to matter. And so when we fixed the business basics, right, there was work and clients all around me. And it was just about fixing the business so that we could uh, have them flow and do good work for them. And, and I think that's really um, the saying as I, I'm like, you know what, I'm not selling some Mayan secret. I don't have the top 10 things that will unlock your blah, blah, blah. What I have is good business because good business is good math. If the math works, the business works. There it's you amazing, go. Right? Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And I was not paying attention to my numbers. Now I'm, I'm passionate about my numbers. Um, you know, my clients kind of call me the cash flow Nazi and I'm like, I don't care. Do you got one? You know, yeah. <laughs> how do I know you're going to have cash in three months? It changes what you do when you know. Um, but people are really scared of the knowledge. So I guess that's kind of the, the, the crux of it. But I'm a business geek at my heart. Um, and I shifted out of interior design into business coaching because I needed more freedom. I, and at the time, my mother-in-law had dementia. She was still alive. My kids were young and I was still working really hard in this business and not having the kind of freedom that I really wanted. Like, got a client get mad at me for taking the day off to take my children to the state fair. Like, <laughs> our entire city in Dallas shuts down on one day so you can take your kid to the, the state fair. fair. <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, something's wrong with this picture. Yeah, so um, coaching is, is definitely gives me a lot more flexibility, a lot more freedom. Um, plus, I get to satisfy that need I have to be a serial entrepreneur. I just grow everybody else's business, and it keeps my husband a little more happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's that's much, that much more gratifying. We can serve many more people and see mm -hmm. the success they have because it's basically you having success as well. So what, is, what does a normal day look like now that you're coaching all these clients and making them rock stars? Well, um, I have a really easy life. Uh, I get up, I take, I don't get up until seven because I, I don't want to get up before seven. Um, <laughs> for the most part, I did get up at 545 this morning. So I do get up early, but I got up at seven. Normally get up at seven. My husband and I sit and have coffee for about 30 minutes. I take my kids to school. You know, I come home, I work out, I take a shower and then I start working. And sometimes that means it's not until 10 o'clock. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Amazing, right? Um, and I work, and I work very dedicatedly. I don't really take a lunch um, because my hours are so compressed. But at 2.30, I stop working. I go pick up my kids. I mom for the next, you know, three or four hours. And so um, I don't work a whole lot of hours. You know, I have a new initiative, so I'm more focused and I'm extending a little bit. But once that gets up and running, it'll come back into that kind of freedom mode. So um, I tell people I'm very vicious with my time. And this is one of those key concepts that I learned really well in the design business was I was doing a lot of busyness. I was doing a lot of things people said you should do, blah, 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 blah. Um, but if they didn't work, people still did them. I don't right. know. There's this concept. <laughs> It's that corporate concept that if you're not doing something, then you're not doing good do work. Right. I don't do anything that isn't about driving my business forward, fulfilling or uh, feeding my soul. I mean, there's some things I do that are more soul filling than revenue generating um, or servicing my clients. And just being very focused on those three things, um, I don't need a whole lot of hours. You know, we were talking that Friday and, you know, we're here Friday recording and this is my CEO mom day. I take off Fridays as much as I can. I do go to a networking meeting in the morning, you know, to about nine. And then it's, it's my day. If I want to go get a massage, I go get a stinking massage. If I need to do grocery shopping, I do grocery shopping. Um, you know, 
everything is very intentional. And I think that's part of uh, why my day is as fluid as it is. And um, I don't share with people, like if I have someone call and say, hey, can we meet at nine? Unless I really want to meet them at nine and cancel my workout for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Unfortunately, I have an appointment at that time. How is 10? Could we do go. 10? <laughs> well, what about on Thursday? I've got one available. Would that work? Like, I don't book a three o'clock appointment. Not if I've got to be in the carpool. Right? Yeah, you got to sit in the carpool line. Come on. Oh, yeah, because that's fun. <laughs> no, but I think, I mean, the, the real big takeaway is there is such a big difference between busy and productive. And yes. you really need to cherish your time. I tell everybody, you can always get more money, but you cannot get more, you cannot get more time. It's and there's the a, truth. There's a certain finite amount of time that you have you have 168 hours every week and how are you going to spend them mm -hmm. and when you're vicious like you said about your time you can get a lot of stuff done because you're not doing things just to do things so for any business owner out there i think that's so such an important takeaway and then the other part is you have to take care of yourself if you can't take care of yourself there's no way you can take care of your customers or your clients because you can't service them the best of your ability if you're not even servicing yourself so exactly I totally agree, totally on the same page, and uh, I love the CEO Mom Fridays. Maybe I'll talk to my wife, and I'll be CEO Dad Fridays and see what hey. happens. <laughs> you might so, be interesting. You might so, enjoy your weekends again. <laughs> yeah, you never know what could happen. So definitely some great takeaways there for our listeners. So I know you said you got a couple new initiatives. You're kind of yeah. working in overdrive here probably maybe 30 hours a week i don't know i don't want to push it but um what are what are these current projects you're working on to help others out there well you know i what the one reason you can afford your time is you probably need more of a value driven business or a business that's not so uh necessitating on you doing the work you know you've got employees and manufacturing and things like that, stuff like that. So my business is built on high value services and I've worked one-to-one -one for um, four years with amazing businesses, but I still have a sweet spot for my startups and my solopreneurs and, and people in that service-based business because it's just a little different when you've got to assign value to your own time and your own work effort. And so um, I had started a mastermind. We're focusing locally here in Dallas uh, to start off and then we'll go virtual, but it's really about getting guiding people through the process of just building a good business tailoring things to themselves um, so that they really can put their own little secret spin, their secret sauce on things, um, and building a business that they love. You know, I, I talk about six figures because everybody's focused on six figures. Um, if you don't need six figures, then don't build a six-figure business, <laughs> you know? Totally I tell people, true. I've walked away from two million dollar businesses and the reason why I walked away from those million dollar businesses was because I did not want to pay the price that I saw that it would take for me to get there. So now people are like, oh, I want a seven figure business. I'm like, heck, just give me a 300,000. Yeah, I'll be you good know, with that. Awesome. I'm good. <laughs> That that's actually really great, especially with this model. But you know, it's it's relative. I think is what I want to share with you because a million dollar design business might generate a income for the designer of a hundred thousand dollars. It's the model that does that, right? right? If you're coaching to take home a hundred thousand, maybe you need a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> it's so different. It so is. It's kind of like get over the number part, like the the judgment about the number, but find out what your number is. Um, if you're trying to build a great a cloud, you're only going to get a cloud. But if you know you need $124,632.19, <laughs> you can build a plan to it. You know, you can actually make that happen. So that's what this mastermind is going to do is really just walk people through niching and offers and pitching and pricing and marketing, all that um, MBA fundamentals of <laughs> building a good small business. Very cool. So if anybody is in the Dallas area, we'll definitely have that all linked up and shared at the end of the, our conversation. But I think it's, yeah. it's totally true because a service-based business, when it's started, is probably the owner who is really good at that service. Mm -hmm. But if you're working in the business 24-7, it's not really a business at all. And it's not going to get you to where it's a very low-paying, stressful job. And it's, yes. it's not going to get you to where you want to go. And I think the key there is figuring out where you want to go before you start the journey and Leslie has firsthand knowledge. She started her journey three days after losing her job and <laughs> didn't really know where she was going. But if you know where you're going and what that number is, it's actually really easy. It's really easy to work your way backwards and build it. So 
Uh, with that being said, is this, what is your kind of future plans with that? I know you said you want to take it virtually. So you're, give us a little bit more insight in, in that. Um, you know, six months will be local, uh, three to six months we'll start adding in the virtual, but within a year, I actually want to start bringing coaches in under me, um, and really blow it out of the water. You know, we talked about the 78 million and we talked a little bit, you do coaching, I do coaching. And, and sometimes people get like, Oh, you know, you can't talk to another coach or you yeah. can't talk to another <laughs> mortgage lender or things like that. And I'm like, dude, there is so many people in this world, you cannot possibly serve them all. Exactly. We're not Coca-Cola and Pepsi, <laughs> right? We're not worried about a 1% drop in market share and how that's going to affect right. the, you know, there's... $1 trillion dollars in sales. <laughs> so there's more than enough to go around. And Dallas is a really big market. It's huge. You know, Raleigh is a big market. So um, we've, got, we've got room to grow. And I, I'm just really passionate. I don't want to see people fail. I hate it, especially when I could see like, Oh, all you need to do is just a little just tweak. Good, just tweak. <laughs> and you'd have some cash. And if you have cash in your business, guess what? You can grow. Um, or you can be comfy. I don't care. Just, right. you know, don't fail because you think you got to do it by yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my long term plan. Or actually, it's year two. <laughs> <laughs> it seems long some days, but year two is we're going to start bringing some coaches on and training um, other really smart business owners on how to grow their business and be profitable. Awesome. And your, your point about there's enough to go around, I think, I mean, yeah. even you probably know it just as well as I do. When we talk to other local business owners, they think, oh man, somebody's already doing this or, mm -hmm. oh man, the comp like to me, I love competition because it gives me an opportunity to show why I'm different. And yeah, every consumer and client is going to connect with you and the brand and the culture you yep. you're actually doing, which is yep. totally different. Your personality, your offering. Yes, we're both business coaches, but people are going to connect to you differently. Yep. And our end goal is the same. We don't want to see people fail. And I think that's really the biggest thing. And having been there, done that, just those little tweaks that people get so sucked into their business, it's hard for them to see those little tweaks because they're just so used to going and going and running and running. And it's, you know, sometimes it's just that little moment of, Aha. Uh -huh. I got it. <laughs> so awesome. So I think this kind of really leads into, you know, what your ideal view of freedom it, to me from the outside looking in, it seems like you've definitely achieved it. And how are you making sure you continue to stay on that path? What's keeping you, you know, kind of focused on that. And so you don't get too sucked into business or, you know, whatnot. Uh, well, I'm not perfect. And I know it is. So some days you do have to learn lessons over and over because it just didn't stick well enough. Um, I go back to, I guess, the, my priorities. You know, um, Mark Cuban said, and it's one of my favorite little picture quotes that I created on, on my website. He said, I can have a million businesses, but I only get one family. I can't do them over. And so I keep that as a very prevailing um, theme in my work. You know, um, my kids are getting older, so we're, we're adjusting, right? I'm like, okay, mom needs to do more of this now. And <laughs> I, but I've been training them for 12 years. So hopefully, you know, they're like, they may not always be happy. But like this morning, I was like, you want to walk to school so I can go to my networking meeting since dad's out of town? And my, <laughs> my younger son's like, no, I do not want to walk to school. And I was like, too bad dessert this <laughs> afternoon and he's like okay fine you know it's a compromise right but everything I do I really do judge it by how it impacts my family not to mean that I don't make choices because you have to make choices but I try to keep it all in balance um you know one I've heard this description of balance and presence is about being where you need to be when you need to be there and then being there 110 percent totally you know? agree you know, and that's how you can have that balance between family and life. You know, our business is our life. It is who I am. Um, I can't help but think about business, and, you know, in the coffee shop. For <laughs> uh, I'm like sitting here calculating their average sale and what their turnover That makes two of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a sickness. It's a sickness. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny when I'm like, oh, oh. If you just did this, guys. I know. <laughs> Exactly. But, you know, I keep that in mind um, and keep everything balanced. So I went away for four days to a conference. I paid in to my family before I left and I paid in to my family after I got back, you know, and I make time for those things to happen. I think that's really where you get into business. When you get on that, um, that wheel, you know, rabbit wheel or hamster wheel and you're just churning and churning and churning, that's when you burn out. 
Yeah. So it's a it's a long distance race, not a marathon or you know a sprint. You know, it's it's you gotta you gotta hang in there for a while. Which to your point of taking care of yourself. I work out because my, I need my body to last. Right. <laughs> you know? I need to be able to work in, intensely. Um, and that's just the conditioning that I do. So you got to keep things in, um, I don't know, perspective and know what your priorities are and where your values are and honor those first and the business will follow second. You know, so my life comes first. My schedule comes first on my everything, life and family oriented. It's first and I work the business around it. Beautiful. And I think, I mean, and if you do protect your time, like we talked about before, it makes it all possible. I've talked to many business owners where they say, I just don't have time for that. I just don't have time for that. <laughs> you have a, you're Please making a choice. You're yes. making a choice of, you know, at the same time you choose to watch three hours of television or you choose to scroll on Facebook for three hours when you're at work or working. So yeah. I like the idea of building your family's time around it. So if your family time is from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then, you know, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., you can build a very profitable, very successful yep. business in yep. those other times if you protect the time when you're actually working on your business. So yep. that is awesome. And this has been great, Leslie. But as you know, all good things do come to an end. After wah, wah, all, wah, wah. after <laughs> all, we are all about freedom on the show. So we don't want to take up too much of your time, especially on this fine Friday CEO mom time or our listeners time because they're looking for that freedom as well. But before yep. we do sign off, it is time for our rapid recommendations for all things related to systems, automation, freedom, business building. So I'm going to give you six topics. You're going to give me one thing on each of those topics to help our business owners start implementing or go checking out today. So what is one book that has helped you along the way? Uh, great by choice. Perfect. What about a quote? Uh, you know, I'm really espousing when people start complaining, uh, <laughs> whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. I'm not into arguing with you. Totally agree. And I, rem I still remember that quote, my first ever basketball practice when I was probably second grade. I tried to do a left-handed layup and I told my coach, I can't do a left-handed layup. And that was the response I got. And ever since then, I've had a really good left-handed layup. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. I so, know. That's kind of why I use it. People <laughs> don't like that to be put in their face. I'm like, all yeah. right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yep. That's your choice, right? <laughs> yeah. What about one tool for your business? Um, I love my time scheduler, although yours is pretty awesome. I was, I was admiring it, but I always hate that back and forth stuff of what about the time? What about the time? What about I'm like, nope, here's my schedule, you know, um, plus it keeps things really, uh, you know, that protection of time. So I love my time scheduler. Yeah. So there's plenty out there. Calendly uh -huh. schedule ones. Definitely recommend it. If you're doing any sort of scheduling meetings or interviews with people, check it out. It'll save you a lot of time and headaches. What about one podcast that you listen to? Um, I do like the one you feed. All right. We'll link that up. What about one community that you hang out in paid or free? <sighs> so I hang out in two that are my family away from my family. And, um, that's NABO. So that's a national association of women business owners and then, um, Plano chamber of commerce. So Dallas has like 30 chambers of commerce. <laughs> um, I chose Plano and I, I love my family. That's who I was with this morning. Um, just a lot of good people trying to do good work. Cool. So if you are a women business owner, definitely check out National Association of Women Business Owners. Mm -hmm. And if you're a local business owner, definitely recommend your Chamber of mm -hmm. Commerce. And last but not least, one parting piece of advice for any business owner out there who is stuck, burned out, or just trying to get over the hump like you were. Uh -huh. um, probably the best thing to realize is that nothing happens to you. It happens because of you. So if you're in a situation, chances are your choices or abdication of choices <laughs> created the situation. Um, that can be very humbling, but that's okay. Because if you created it, you can change it. I mean, really, you're in a position of creation. So if you don't like it, go do something about it. You know, otherwise, Stop. <laughs> yes, we're, I was just talking about that with the, another guest uh, on the show and it was kind of, if you can control it, then don't let, then go make something and go fix it. Otherwise, if you can't control it, don't let it bother you because you yeah. are, it doesn't, it doesn't affect your life. So yep. very awesome. Thank you so much. Leslie Hassler, thank you for taking time out of your day, especially on a Friday to impart some of your knowledge, wisdom, and enthusiasm to our community. Hopefully this helps everyone out there get one step closer to achieving that ultimate freedom in their business 
and in life. But before we sign off, where can our listeners go to keep in touch with you? Sure. So the best place to go is just my website and it's your biz, B-I-Z, rules, plural, um, dot com. So a uh, couple of free gifts there. I write a lot. Um, that's one of my soul feeding activities, <laughs> expression. Um, so lots of tips and strategies out there. I give it away because I really believe that you, you shouldn't have one question go an- unanswered that could impact your business. And so if that's all you need from me, then take it. I gladly give it. You need more? Then call me. We'll talk, <laughs> you know? So um, yourbizrules.com is probably the easiest way to uh, get in touch with me and find out what I'm about. Cool. So we will link that up, yourbizrules.com. It'll be in the show notes. So if you're busy right now and you don't have time to write it down or type it out, that will be there. If you want to connect with her on Twitter, it's also yourbizrules. Other than that, stay tuned for next week's episode as we dive into another fantastic interview with Barry and Catherine Cohen from Business Solutions for Growth. And if you like what you're hearing, we'd always appreciate a friendly review, subscribe, and share with your friends. Until next time, don't forget, join our free Facebook group at bizfreedomformula.com, where we can continue the conversation with like-minded entrepreneurs who are putting the plans in place to work less, make more, while increasing the value of their business and achieving ultimate freedom. Leslie has been there, done that. Definitely, if you're in the Dallas area, connect with her, yourbizrules.com. Till then, keep rocking, trust the process, and talk to you soon. Thank you.